Welcome to another podcast here in the Rams Den. Uh, today I'm joined by Asal Alamdari. Asal, welcome back to the channel. You've been here before. Not on this one though, on the on the first channel. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah I'm good. Thanks for having me. Cool. So so last time we had you on, it was to discuss Anonymous for the Voiceless, as as obviously you're the co-founder of the group. And that was a three and a half hour live stream. <laughs> not it gonna was. be quite as <laughs> not gonna be quite uh as um long as that today. And um, today we're not talking about that either, of course. We're talking about something entirely different. Uh, we're going to be talking about the situation currently in Iran. So I saw you were making posts uh, in a language that I didn't understand, um, Farsi, I believe it is, yes. uh, which makes sense as you're Iranian. And then I realized that you were speaking about all the protests and everything going on. And I realized I don't really know that much about what's going on. And I think a lot of people don't, to be honest. So mm -hmm. um Really happy you agreed to come on today to discuss everything with us and, and you know, help people realize and, and understand what's going on. Hopefully do something about it as well. Um, before we get into it, maybe we could start with a bit of an intro about you. And obviously people, vegans will know you from Anonymous for the Voiceless, but um, your background, like family background, like what, what's, what's your, yeah, why are you so passionate about this cause? And, you know, what's your background here, I suppose? Um, let's start there. Yeah, sure. Um, so I was born and raised in Iran, um, in Tehran, and I moved to Australia when I was 22. Um, so for the last 12 years, I've been living in Australia. And um, I'm passionate about it because it's obviously, you know, the country that I come from and everything that's happening now, um, I've experienced it myself before. And, you know, there has been protests in the past that I have participated in myself. And um, so I could just feel it, you know, in my bones. So, mm. you know, um, obviously that's why I'm so passionate about it. And normally I don't post about, um, you know, things like this or my main focus is usually about animal rights and veganism. Although on my personal page, I do post about everything, just, you know, it's kind of like just whatever um, in my day to day life. But usually I don't spend as much time um, talking on a topic other than veganism with this much passion. And I guess mm -hmm. um, some people have um, contacted me and are wondering why. And that's why because that's the country that I'm from. And, um, you know, it's interesting because I had a realization the other day that, you know, even though I've been living in Australia for 12 years and I have an Australian passport, so I'm an Australian citizen, um, I will always be an Iranian Australian, uh, which is not a common thing. Like you don't really hear people talk about it like that, but um, I can't take that out of myself, even though I haven't been back home for eight years. Um, and I didn't even have plans to go back, but it's just, like I said, it's something that I feel in my bones. So, yeah. Okay. And you, so you, were, I didn't know you were born and raised there actually. So, and, and you mentioned you were in protests, you'd been to protests there before, right? So yeah. I guess that was, uh, maybe it was in your teens, I guess, before you moved. Um, it was actually, um, literally before I left Iran and it was, I guess, one of the okay. main, um, drivers for me to or for my family to want to get me out of the country um i think okay. yeah it was it was around the time it was 2021 um and there were massive protests happening at that time i think this is the first one that is like the a, a really big one after that um there there has been many protests but since then but this is quite large and the last one that was similar, you know, to the size and the extent was, yeah, around the time it was 2021 and literally a year before I left my country. And that, and, and back then, so what, were you protesting for similar things to, as to now? We're going to get onto that, but like, what, what exactly were you protesting at that point? Um, that one was, I think that was 2009 and that one um, was because we had our presidential elections, which happens every four years. Um, and it was quite clear that um, there was fraud going on and, you know, it was oh, just okay. like everyone knew that. Um, so the day that they announced um, the votes, everyone just took to the streets and it, yeah, it was, it was massive. So that was the reason. Right, they, they, I got it. So they give the, I read about this, they give the appearance of a democracy, but, but 
this one apparently it was so obviously fraudulent that it, it people couldn't believe like how like i i was reading that i don't tell me if this is right or wrong that most people they they like to believe that it's a democracy that you know what i mean to make them feel comfortable but apparently this was so obvious that nobody could pretend that there's a democracy it was so in your face like fraudulent yeah. that's yes. what caused the protests right i was reading yeah um, exactly a bit about that before and that um yeah, like like the average person, like the people, um, do not believe mm. that it's a democracy. So it's it's really the right. government that that likes to, you know, pretend like it is, um, right. which you know, it, like maybe people don't understand. People outside of Iran, um, mm -hmm. it, it, it it is hard to understand when you know you have your government lying um, about literally everything. Um, when they're being interviewed, you know, like when they're overseas being interviewed or, um, you know, we had our president, the Iranian president, um, recently speaking at the UN. Um, and, it, you know, it just pisses people off because there's just so much lies and every single person knows that. So, yeah, with the election, it was just clear as day. So people were protesting. Okay. And then, and then now, so right now, um, something just happened in Iran. I think, I think some people will know about this, but not enough. So can you talk through what, well, actually these protests started in 2019 and pretty much, um, they've been going on since 2019. There's been the, the most latest kind of protests and that it paused over the, over the, um, the whole pandemic, right. Because of the lockdowns and stuff, but now it's kicked off again. So what just happened that, that, talk us through the situation and, and why this has just suddenly erupted and, and it's probably the biggest it's ever been right currently the protest movement over in Iran yeah I think in 2019 um if I'm not mistaken the protest started because of the um well the inflation rate is extremely high in Iran it's something like 40 percent it might even be higher um and I think what happened in 2019 was that overnight the price for petrol went up like it tripled um right, so okay. so that that was the cause for that um but this time um it started i think you know just to give some context it's like there are so many problems um not just for women but you know financial issues like i said the inflation rate rate is pretty bad you don't really get any support from the government obviously human rights is a joke over there it just doesn't exist um if you're arrested you know as a journalist reporter whatever like you're not going to get a fair trial so there's so many things that are going on so i feel like what happened recently was the last straw uh, for right. many people so um what happened was um we have this thing called the morality police which is a sector in the police um and what they do they have these vans um that go around in the streets and they um take issue with the way you are dressed this is mainly um this applies mainly to women but it also applies to men so may maybe a lot of people don't know this and they think you know, they try to dictate what women wear, but they also do that to men to a degree. So, um, yeah, so so we have that morality police that that's what they do. They just go around and if you're not dressed appropriately according to their liking, um, they'll take issue with it. Sometimes they just tell you to fix the problem if it's possible. If not, they'll put you in the van. Basically, you're under arrest. They don't put handcuffs on you, um, but you can't go anywhere and they take you, you know, to a place. And um, a lot of times people resist because they don't want to go and they'll be beaten, they will be literally arrested. And this is not the first time that something like this has happened. But this time um, there was a girl, I think she was 22, and she, according to the pictures and videos that we have all seen, she's actually dressed appropriately according to their own standards. So there is nothing wrong with the way she is dressed. And they took her and you see a video that like from the CCTV um, that shows she gets up and she talks to one of the um, people that work for the morality police. And, um, and then she kind of holds her heads and she she falls down so she passes out 
Now, what we don't know and we don't see is what happened between when she was arrested and put in a van in that moment. So mm -hmm. then she ends up in a hospital um, in a coma for a few days and then she, she dies. Um, right. So from the evidence that everyone has seen, it seems like she was killed. And again, it's not the first time that this happens. Um, there are so many questions about this, whether she she was killed, whether um, there was injury to the head, whether she had a heart attack, because that's what the Iranian government and media is trying to say, that she, she was so stressed that she had a heart attack. But it doesn't really matter, and that's, you know, that's beside the point. The point is that women or men, young people, should not be so stressed out um, about how they're dressed to the degree that they're going to pass out. So even if that was the case, it's wrong as it is. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, that's what started all of these protests. She was in a coma for a few days. She died. And um, actually, the reporter who was, you know, very persistent with reporting on this, and she was like going to the hospital, checking on her. She's actually also in prison at the moment. So the, oh, really? the woman that is the reason why we all know about this is actually in prison. Yeah. So this this whole thing happened. This whole thing uh, with the morality plea, with this this girl dying, all because was all because of this group, the morality police, and these are. They're working on behalf of of what is is it a religious background? Is this why they do it? Because they believe that it's 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 against Islam to 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 not dress the way they deem, or is there something else that's driving them to go and do this to people? Essentially, yes, because um, right. Iran is an Islamic country, so it's the Islamic Republic okay. of Iran. Um, so they do follow Sharia law. However, right, okay. there are many countries in the area that do follow a similar law or they are Islamic countries. But, um, you know, most people in Iran, including myself, believe that this is not the real Islam and this is, they're really doing it in the name of Islam because like I said, even, even according to their own standards, um, in this particular case, for example, there was nothing wrong with the way that girl was dressed. So they do mm. say that they are doing it in the name of Islam. Um, mm. But also in Islam, there are many things that are haram or they're wrong. Um, it, it, you know, there are so many inconsistencies, you know, beating people yeah, to death and, you know, like arresting them for nothing or kill, literally killing people um, is also um, not consistent with Islam. So no, of course, they're just yeah, using there's that. A lot, yeah. yeah. Picking and choosing, um, yeah. depending on what they believe or don't believe. And then at times use, I mean, I mean, it's, it's kind of been done forever, hasn't it? Using religion as an excuse to take power or, um, you know, cause the, the idea it's, it's a, it's a, it's a completely crazy idea that some all loving, all peaceful God would sentence you to a life in hell for having a piece of her showing. You know what I mean? If you truly believe that, then your God isn't, that's not a, that's not a God anyone should worship really. You know, if, if that's the punishment you get for showing a piece of, of her or having a, your wrist out of your clothing, you know, that, that that's insanity, isn't it? So I think we're, we, I think we, I think that's clear for anyone with, with, um, half a brain, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so, so I can see why the protests would, would, would kick off for the missing and, and, you know, I can, it's, it's completely understandable that it's, um, with, with all the, as I mean, obviously if this just happened, if this, if this situation with this 22 year old happened and that was it, it would be enough to kick off the biggest protests, but with all the history as well, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's understandable how now it's all coming to a head and the protests themselves. I mean, I've seen, I've not seen much because the media doesn't seem to be covering it so much. At least the, the mainstream media is completely avoiding it, but it's quite violent, right? The, the response from the police has been pretty intense um, out there. Yeah. Like, what, can you tell us a bit about that? Um, yeah, well, um, first of all, the, the Iranian media is heavily censored. They, everything they show is propaganda. Everything is, is live. They never cover anything. Um, even reporters that are coming, journalists that are coming from other countries, um, if they want to do you, their job right, they are going to be arrested and they're going to be in trouble. So um, the only real um, 
the reports that we have is from people that are actually sending videos and footage from what's happening and what they have done, the Iranian government, as they always do, they shut down the internet um, or they slow it down. Um, and they have filtered many platforms like Instagram, WhatsApp. So, you know, Iranians don't really have a way to contact, you know, other people outside of Iran. So it's it's hard to get it out. Um, but yeah, so, you know, you see a little bit on media, but um, we only, see, you know, we only see what people were able to record and send. So um, most of it will not be recorded. Most of it will not even get out. Um, these protests are very violent. You know, people are literally just standing in the street. They are, you know, maybe chanting. They're literally just wanting justice. They just want answers. Mm -hmm. And you see people, you see the police shooting them. Um, and, and, and the thing is, you know, um, I don't know if other countries are similar, but I know like, for example, in Australia, if there's a protest and something goes wrong, you have the police. You, you just have like mm -hmm. one body, which is the police. In Iran, it's not like that. We have so many different organizations. So we have our police and then we have um, other groups. Um, we have like the special guards or whatever that come in, you know, when things are serious and they're literally dressed mm. like ready for war. So they bring them out. And then we have people that dress in normal clothing. They don't have uniforms, but they do carry guns. Um, so we have so many different groups that, you know, will go to attack people. And, and um, you know, as I was saying earlier, there is no like the justice system is so broken that anyone can just take out a gun and shoot someone they can get away with it um right yeah and that's going on right now um yeah pretty consistently as if, if as far as i can see as well which is just it's it's madness and it's yeah i, I can see you know there might be some logical reason that the that the western media is not covering it like you said maybe there's not enough footage coming out or something like that we could if we if we were trying to be reasonable or not reasonable if we're trying to be um charitable to western media and oh this is why they're not covering it but um do you think there's something else to this like do because i i really don't see the i mean we can talk about we can talk about the western mainstream media and we can also talk about the social side of that in, in a second as well like there's in you know individual activists and individual people as well but do you why do you think it seems it seems to me like the mainstream media is avoiding it? Is there, is there a political reason for that? Or do you think something's going on? Or is it just literally that you just don't think there's enough content coming out? Or is there like a more, a less conspiracy theory reason? What, what's your take on that? Um, I, I, I honestly don't know because um, even though, yeah, we don't have a lot of footage, but we do have enough. Um, mm. I personally usually don't watch the, the mainstream media anyway. This is this is the first time in I don't know how long that I'm consuming so much news every single day um, for the last week. Um, but even with that, I pick and choose. Like I'm really mindful because I know not every single news channel is going to be, you know, true with what they're covering. Um, and I am open to all different theories. Um what is really clear to me is that there has been a lot of coverage, not, not necessarily coverage, but, um, you know, there's so many people with big platforms that have spoken up about this in the last week. Mm. People with, you know, millions and millions of followers on their Instagram. Um, I can't think of many, you know, celebrities and influencers that haven't spoken up about this, mm. haven't made a post or a story. So it's like, okay, everyone's talking about it. And it's, so, you know, everyone knows what's happening, but then, mm. the you know, the, even the news channels, the ma mainstream media that has covered some of it um, just doesn't seem to result in anything that would help the people in Iran because mm. mm -hmm. um, covering it is one thing, but then what is the outcome or what is the goal that we're trying to achieve? Um, that worries me more than the fact that we haven't had enough covering or coverage. Um, I feel like so many people have spoken up about it and every 
single news channel knows about this. Every politician knows about this. Many politicians here in Australia or in the US have talked about it in Europe. So many people have talked about it. But all they can do is to blame the government. Okay, we know the government is to blame for, but how can we help the actual people in Iran that are suffering and they're in danger in it? You know, um, that right. worries me a lot more. Right. So, so you feel like it's more it's more like virtue signaling than actually taking action at this point. Like people are kind of right, right, okay. It's and, either and that even, or yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, yeah. Go ahead. It's okay. Um, I was gonna say it's either that or um, it's literally the fact that um, you know other countries cannot do anything about the situation mm. in Iran, you know, like the whole world, all the politicians, everyone in power, all the governments in the world can come together and blame the Iranian government. How are they going to help the people in Iran? I'm I'm coming to realize that it, it doesn't, you know, it, it's just not an option because it seems to me that, you know, the Iranian government's um, kind of, they own the country and the people and you can't even question them because, you know, the Iranian president was in New York recently. They dodge all the questions. They don't even um, get much pressure from journalists to have to mm -hmm. answer the questions or, um, you know, as it is, we have had sanctions against Iran for many years, but those sanctions only make the life of Iranians harder because the government have their own ways to go around the sanctions. So they achieve their own goals. Now, what I've right. heard from politicians in, in US is that we're gonna place more sanctions against Iran. Or I've heard even I think in Europe, they're talking about the same thing. So placing sanctions against Iran, but they don't realize that doesn't help the people that makes it actually harder for people. Right, I understand, yeah. It seems, I mean, I mean, from, from the outside, and, and I can, I'm, I'm saying this as somebody who's not like when I'm looking at this, you know, I'm not looking at it from your perspective, from, from, from how you see, because obviously you're really into this. I'm looking at it as more of an outsider as it's not something I'm, that's why I invited you here. Cause I don't really know what I'm looking at, you know, and I don't see too much. Um, and, you know, comparatively, when I look at, for example, the, the 2020, um, BLM, the situation with George Floyd, and then I look at now the situation with Ukraine, these two situations, um, especially the George Floyd situation, which has a lot in common with the one that just happened in, in, in Iran, right? Let's be honest. And, and, and on the, the main difference between the two situations, um, they're both situations of the of government or, or somebody in authority abusing their power. Um, and, um, and then obviously the most recent situation, uh, you know, with one country trying to invade another, it's slightly different. But the point is, with BLM and with Ukraine, this, this has been these have been like global um like globally mobile global mobilization of of people to to assist to get send money to send donations to you know people are calling for the usa to send troops in to to ukraine and send to, you know for for all the countries like send people in send money send weapons send everything and with with blm they raised millions and millions and millions of dollars which the you know as we know now some of the founders went and bought mansions with but that's a whole other topic entirely right. but the point is is that they you know they were able to raise millions from the global you know activist populations let's say human rights people interested um, and you're talking about what can we do for Iran right now? And, and you're saying it doesn't really seem like anything's well, it, to me from the outside, it doesn't seem like there's anything close to the level, to the level of tenacity from either politicians, governments, or people to help these people as there was for George Floyd or as there has been for Ukraine. And for me, I, I I'm, this is where I kind of go into conspiracy mode, but I am wondering like, why, it's, you know, let, let's focus in on George, the George Floyd situation. Like, why was that in global news constantly? Like, literally, you could not, you couldn't turn on the news, you couldn't open a, a Instagram without seeing something about that for, like, I want to say, months even. Whereas the situation now in Iran, it's it's barely even making my home news feed. It's barely making. I, I see your stories, and that's it on my feed. No one else is talking about it. There's no you know, black square campaign. There's no, there's, there's, I, and you're saying celebrities have posted it. I mean, I, have, I haven't seen them. Um, so they're not on my radar. So the celebrities I'm 
in, interacting with aren't posting about it at least and um it's not being pushed into my news feeds at all and there's no campaign to it so i'm i'm yeah that's I, I you say there there's no you're not sure how to help well i mean it doesn't feel like there is the drive to help the same drive to help as there have been other causes mm. um and i'm just wondering why the inconsistency i'm wondering where the hypocrisy is um why there is such a hypocrisy that um to be honest with you um do you, i want to put you on the spot do you, do you have an opinion on why that could be um or, or is this also kind of are you surprised about this as i am like um i mean i i am open to conspiracy theories myself mm. um <laughs> i i have always been skeptical about politics and politicians and governments mm. and more and more every day that goes by i feel you know, more strongly about that. Even, you know, in Australia that I've been living for the last 12 years, I see things that, you know, make me think, you know, yeah, here people have a better life, but then at the end of the day, the government and the politicians don't seem to really, really care about people. That's my opinion. I mean, some places are worse than other places, like a place like Iran has it really bad. Um, but to answer your question, I mean, I'm not too sure. Um, it's interesting to hear your point of view and your experience in all of this, because obviously I'm, like I said, I'm constantly consuming news about this. I'm literally going on my phone to pages and places that I know are going to be reporting about this. Um, but I was actually talking to a friend here today and he was saying the same thing as you when I told him that, you know, really big celebrities like Kim Kardashian with 300 million followers has posted about this issue in Iran mm. um, and others. He was shocked and he was like, I didn't think that I haven't seen anything mm -hmm. from these big platforms. Um, so I feel like I know that because I'm in the middle of it and people like myself can see that. But that tells mm -hmm. me that we still haven't had enough coverage. Um, it's mm -hmm. not getting the airtime that it deserves. Um, and, you know, even with people that share this stuff on their platforms, um, like you said, is it virtual signaling? It could be. Um, it could also be from pressure, just simply pressure, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm kind of proud of being an Iranian um, at the moment because I can see how persistent Iranians can be. They decided that they want to make this hashtag go viral and it has broken so many records on Twitter. And, you know, they decide that they're going to go and comment on, you know, David's latest post for example and in a few days you're just going to have to make a post about it you know what i mean it's it's that kind of pressure as well um but you know i i just don't know if um again even if more politicians were talking about us or more people with big platforms were demanding that someone does something about this mm -hmm. i just don't know what the international laws uh, like what kind of international law exists that can they can go into a country and support the people and and kind of rescue them from their own government you know i just haven't seen that before um you know when you look at places like afghanistan or uh, i don't know maybe there are so many other places that i can think of right now but mm -hmm. when for example us decides to attack the country that doesn't really help the people. Yeah, especially the way they do it. Yeah, exactly. for sure. Exactly. So I feel like that just, again, that seems like just political games to me, even if it was to come to mm -hmm. come down to that. Um, it's really frustrating and sad. Um, but I just, yeah, I just, I'm not positive about people outside of Iran, even politicians being able to do anything about the situation. It's like the so government it's knows. Be sorry Go ahead, yeah sorry the government knows that people don't want them it's so clear they know that people don't want them but they're not willing to give up they're not willing to just pack and leave what can you do about that i guess only the people there on the ground really um i mean i guess the only thing that they, i don't know how it would even get over there but like like the like the us or lots of countries have been pouring money into 
Ukraine. I guess there's got to be a way to get people money and resources. Um, Elon Musk wants to try and get them a satellite so they can use the yeah. internet. So there are there are a few things that could happen yes. for sure. Um, so these are probably the things that could help, but actually getting people on the ground is probably not going to go well, is it? And it's not gone well in the past for other countries. So I can see, I, I, I think I agree with you that that probably isn't a good option. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, but there are some support options and, and what, what exactly is it? So I, I was, I was looking into this and I was seeing like pre 1979, Iran was actually quite, um, Western, uh, in, in this, in the way that people were dressing and acting and living and. Um, it was kind of more liberal, more more progressive, but then there was the, it, it all changed, obviously, and and it seemed like back then that quite a lot of people wanted the change um, without realizing what it would what what it would mean. Do you think now? I mean, this might be the most obvious question of the podcast, but is, do people want to go back to that? Is that is that what they're protesting for? That they want to be more uh, progressive, liberal, like that again, and and um, you know, go back to like pre seventy nine, at least in the lifestyle. Um, or is there something else that people are actually gunning for? Um, well, I think the the majority of protesters today, whether the ones that are fighting on the ground or the ones that are doing the work online, they're the post-revolution generation. So people younger than myself. Um, so I'm talking about people in their 20s or even younger. Mm -hmm. um, they haven't seen those days. They they only hear about it from their parents um, and they see the videos like myself as well. And, you know, every, every time that I've asked my parents or other people about it, they had no complaints. Um, so it makes me think like, why did people decide that they wanted a revolution? Um, but at the moment, yes, they do want that because Iran was quite, um, you know that i think iran used to be called the paris of the middle east um and right. in the last week even i myself as an iranian i've seen footage from back then that i hadn't seen before and and it just makes me really sad what we had and how we used to be you know um but it, it, sometimes when i see comments from people now um in the last week from these younger generations they're saying that yes they do want to be liberated and they want to live in a you know more uh progressive country however they don't necessarily want to go back to having a king um so in terms of the structure of the government i think people disagree or a lot of people don't even know they just want these guys to leave and then they want to they want to decide but yes of course everyone wants to go back to being able to you know dress however they want and not be arrested for holding hands with their boyfriend or being able to you know for women to be able to sing and dance and you know there are so many things that i think many people um in other countries don't realize you know things that people just take for granted you you don't even think about it like i said you you can't hold hands with your boyfriend um you could be arrested for that or the fact that um you know women are not allowed to sing or even um you know on on the national tv they will never show instruments so you can hear music but then they, they, they will never actually show the musical instrument there are so many backward things that are just like it's insane. Like every time I think about it or I want to talk about it, I I can't even like put it in words how backward that is and and how crazy that is. Um, what, so what's that with the instrument? So why why can they not show an instrument on? Like what, what's um, the situation with that? It, it, it's funny. I just said a random thing, but yeah, it's insane because um, they seem to have issue with anything that. This is my opinion. Anything that okay. is happy and is light right. is makes people happy. Um, any anything that people can express themselves with. So um, music is heavily controlled, um, and I think the idea is that you know, um, it, it's just you know, showing, showing um, instruments or showing women playing instruments. It's kind of like um, spreading that culture of, 
you know um I don't even like I can't even explain it because it's it's so stupid but it's yeah. um it's got to do with I feel it's got to do with just controlling people mainly women um and taking everything every little thing away from them you know um again in the name of Islam because in Islam surely you can listen to music and sing like mm. I said there are many Arabic countries there are Islamic countries they have female singers um but yeah they i feel like they just want people to to be miserable have you it reminds me of a movie called equilibrium i'm not sure if you've seen that with um christian bale it's a it's like set in a future where basically the way that there's there's a new government and they're like it's a global government right and the way they have stopped all war and all basically they've eradicated crime. There's no crime. There's no war. There's no violence at all. Only from the the police because they need to sometimes. Apparently, um, it's a very political movie. And in this is sci-fi. And they everyone takes these drugs, and these drugs dampen your emotions. And all media, um, books, music, film, all of it is is extremely restricted uh, to the point where if, if you have any of it, that's that's not the allowed. Um, you're basically arrested immediately. So um, music is completely banned. Um, there's no music at all. Um, so the, the only books you can read are the ones that government, you know, books that are about the government, basically, yeah. you know, about the the how great our state is now and stuff like that. It's a really good movie. And it, it's it's scary because it's, you know, this is sci-fi. This is, it, it, you know, it's an, a sci-fi action kind of thing. But that's what you just basically described when you were trying to explain how it is that it sounds extremely similar which mm -hmm. is um yeah it's all kinds of fucked up i didn't yeah. even know it went that far honestly i'd never heard that before about the music thing i didn't i didn't yeah know it like i can i can list level, so though. many things that are as ridiculous as that and like i said mainly um they affect women but um yeah like we have men they can sing um but again the the music is very much controlled so if you're an artist if you're a musician uh, we have this organization you have to submit your music they have to uh they have to accept that you know you, you can yeah sure you can sing the song they take issue with it they can ban you they can they can ban your concerts um for whatever reason um yeah it, it, it sounds similar and i'm i'm gonna watch that movie i don't think i've seen it i'm gonna watch it at some point but it's just um it, it's weird because I was talking to a friend and I was kind of explaining this to, to her and I was saying um, it's kind of like living a double life when you're born in Iran because you have one life at home and then you have one life at school, at, at work, outside because everyone knows that everyone drinks alcohol at home, everyone has satellite TV, everyone has well, they did have access to the internet so they can watch whatever they want. They can listen to whatever music, watch whatever movies they want. Um, if you're at a private party, you dress however you want. But then as soon as you leave your house and you go out, you have to pretend like you're going with the rules. Um, and I think that's extremely fucked up, like to have to to have to pretend and and you have to do that. Like, like I said, you have to do that since you're little, because when you go to school, every parent would be like, don't talk about, you know, the fact that we drank alcohol last night, you know, don't bring it up mm. to your teacher or don't tell them that we have satellite TV or, um, so you're teaching your children to, to, to be two faced, to, to, to be liars. Yeah. And they have to live their whole life like that. Um, and yeah, it's so, I think it's so traumatizing and dangerous, but, it's been going on for 40 something years um, and they have made little changes. You know, when you look back 40 years ago, 30 something years ago was a lot more strict with certain things like right. music, um, right. but it's still so backwards. And when, when you were growing up there, so um, were you also, was, was it that strict for you? So did you have to wear all the, um, you know, the clothing they, they said for school and stuff and like all the way up until you left? The country you would you were having to do all those things Absolutely. as well yeah you have to you can't you can't not do that so when you turn seven you go to school 
um, mm -hmm. and you know we don't have co-ed, so it's boys um, school, girls school, and a seven-year-old little girl has to wear the uniform, which is you know the headscarf and the long mm -hmm. kind of um, shirt with pants, and and we we always hated it because it was so depressing, you know. Um, I know, like even in other countries kids have uniforms, but it's nothing like mm. that. Um, we yeah. all hated it. And um, again, like you would have to do that, but then you go home and you take it all off. Or even like, cause I think for girls, um, up until you're nine, you don't have to cover your hair. So it's okay. funny between the age of six or seven until nine, you just have to cover it at school. But as soon as you come out of the school, you could take it off. But, um, I was actually, I think I was nine or around that age. So I was still little. Um, and I was I was wearing a shirt and pants and I did have a headscarf and we were going, um, we were taking a flight. We were traveling with my mom and my family. And they, take, they took issue with the way I was dressed. They were like, her pants are too tight. And I remember right. that so vividly. I was a little girl. I was a nine-year-old girl. And yes, you have to you have to do what they say because, um, you know, it, it, when you start growing up, if you're a teenager, um, then they have the right to take you, detain you. And um, there are so many stories from the girls or women who have been arrested. Um, they have been raped. Some of them have been killed. Um, again, the, the justice system is is so broken, you can't do much about it. Um, but yeah, I, I did all of that as well up until I left. I, I lived that life as well. Everyone does. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Um, you must feel quite, you know, not quite very fortunate to, to now, you know, be able to, to live so freely i can't I, I never realized like obviously knowing who you are and knowing you um I, I never knew this background yeah you know it's 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 pretty crazy to now realize that you actually lived that and you could you could still be there you know you could have you, you could have stayed there and and the, you know this person who just had all you could have been one of those people you know what i mean who who ended up um you know so really suffering at the, the hands of these people doing all this this horrible shit so it's it is a crazy thing to think about um, and it really brings it home as to, you know, all the people that are still there now. It, 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 I think I think for anyone watching this, I think the real real kind of takeaway from this is I think a lot of information, if, if, if people didn't know this information, now they do. But I think it also really brings it home when you're speaking to someone who's, you know, you grew up in the country and um, it, it could so easily have been you that was that we were talking about now. And it makes it more... I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like, it's more of a human, you know what I mean? It's not just people yeah. on the TV. Like, when I was right. talking to a person here, right, a human here who has, uh, has been there, lived this life, and and I hope this makes people more connect with the cause. I hope people more connect with the people there now. And um, now there's a bit more of something to connect to. That's kind of what I was hoping for with this podcast, really. Yeah. Um, because it is insane. And the more you talk, the more I'm like, oh, my God, I can't, I can't, I, I can't even imagine what it must be like to live there. Um and to have to go through that, just, just that point you made about like the two separate lives freaks me out. Like it sounds like something out of a movie. Like I said, it's like a sci-fi yeah. movie. It doesn't it's, sound real, you yeah. know? Yeah, it, it sounds is. like a complete, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like one of those, um, uh, what is that called? Not doomsday movies, but like, you know, like oh, the um, one kind of... Um, like an Orwell movie, like an Orwell type thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Dystopia. Yeah, dystopian movies exactly um yeah you're right i could be one of those people and you know i actually i i feel um fortunate that i haven't experienced a lot of that stuff because you know growing up i um i was going out with girls and boys um i was also going to parties like underground parties um, I had boyfriends and so I, um, I feel fortunate that I didn't ever was arrested or taken to one of those places, but literally every single friend of mine has a story 
Um, you know, if you attend a party, especially if there's alcohol involved, um, if you're caught with a guy, um, you'll be arrested, you'll be taken into police custody. You might sleep there for a couple of nights, three nights. Um, and, you know, according to the law, um, if you drink alcohol, for example, you get 80 lashes um, unless you right. can afford to pay for it. And I don't know how that works exactly, but um, yeah, like just right. thinking that that is happening right now, 2022, um, many of oh. my friends have experienced that. Um, my best friend, oh, when we were, um, I think we were like 18 or something, she was arrested at a party and she slept at the um, detention center or whatever for, for two nights, for three nights. Well, and right. I was like, oh, my God, like anything could happen. That's the thing. Anything could happen um, because um, those people that work in those places, like the police officers or the guards or whatever, um, because they know there will be no consequences, um, they can do anything to you and they can get away with it. So you could end up dead. You could end up um, heavily injured. Um, and there is so much, um, you know, even like verbal disrespect and, um, you know, the way, the degrading way that they especially look at women, they talk to women, um, yeah, I think it, the problem is that women are so heavily sexualized there more than anywhere I know, um, which is why, you know, even our voice is sexualized. That's why women are not allowed to sing because they say if you hear a woman singing, you might you might feel sexually aroused. That's that's how they think. Or if I show my hair, that might be arousing to a guy. Um, if I show too much skin, it, you know, it, that's that's that that's the um rationale behind mm -hmm. behind if you all watch of the if you watch that movie i mentioned that equilibrium you'll you'll see some very very this some really clear um similarities there with that it's it's so unusual that people are putting this like that that's a such sci-fi that's fictional it's so crazy that people are like putting this kind of stuff out there as like this is real you know that like we can't have people having these emotions from hearing singing you know mm -hmm. it's 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 so um it's got yeah dystopian is the word it's just it's yeah. it's 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 hard to believe this is real but my god it is um so you you've mentioned that you, you don't know how the international community can help here and and i understand that that's it, it really it, it's going to have to be you know a homegrown um movement of change obviously and with hopefully support from those who can support like musk potentially sending satellites over to i think you already did maybe at least um to, to get internet um that's one great thing that can be done and there will be lots of other things that can be done but for the for the, that I'm sure that we can't think of right now, but I'm sure I hope at least someone, some people like like Elon Musk, if the governments won't do anything other than these, um, what were you saying earlier? Sorry, sanctions. Uh, mm -hmm. If that's all they're going to do, well, I hope there are people like Elon Musk out there who can do something more because that's simply not working. Like you said earlier, it's not going to do much. But what about the average person? What about someone like someone like? Uh, who doesn't have like for example we're doing a podcast so this is this is one way of getting the, at least the truth out to people what about somebody who doesn't have a podcast doesn't have really any big reach on social media um what what can the average person do to help if anything at this point um i think it just continuing to kind of spread the news and um not letting it die down because um it's it, i think it's been 12 days um since the start of the protest and i can already feel the energy coming down a little bit um and you know people like myself that are outside of iran um i'm sure a lot of people can relate to this um like a lot of iranians what we are trying to do is we're trying to keep the spirit up because we can't be there obviously if i was there mm -hmm. If I was still living there, I would be on the streets. Um, it's also hard for us to tell people to get out on the streets because we're not the ones that are potentially going to be killed. Um, oh. But what we are trying to do is, one, we're trying to um, 
make this go as viral as possible so that everyone is talking about it, everyone knows about it. But we also want to send, you know, support to people that are actually in Iran and they're fighting. Um, that's what I'm doing. So that's that that's been my focus. And I made a post um, about a week ago, and um, I I just wanted to kind of explain, you know, that um, this is what's happening. And the call to action um, that I put in there was was this exactly was that you know we all we can do is just speak up for them and um support them because you know I don't have a huge platform myself on my Instagram um but I just keep talking about it and um I see you know other people seeing my post and then they share it and then hopefully that will end up with someone with a bigger platform and I think it doesn't even matter like how big or small, but the fact that we just continue to talk about it, um, like I said, so that it doesn't die down. Um, and there are so many creative ways of helping and supporting people in Iran. Like I see, um, first of all, the Iranian community outside of Iran are, are doing great work by organizing protests. Um, like I see videos from Canada, um, Europe, like even here in Australia, in the big cities, they organize these massive protests because it's legal and we can do it. So they show their support that way. Um, another thing is, you know, writing down to politicians and, um, you know, sending an email and just in whatever way we think would would help um mm -hmm. put you know a adding pressure like putting pressure on them and hopefully they will put pressure on the iranian government if that's going to achieve you know something um but yeah that's that's what people can do to support because there is no way of say donating money or you know none of that is going to help people it's literally just making sure that everyone is talking about it and everyone knows about it um for as long as this goes for okay and where can people find you on instagram if they want to show your posts what's your instagram at um my instagram is just my um first name last name um it's okay. um sl with double s l m dari so um cool. yeah i'm pretty sure that's it <laughs> cool it's okay we'll put it in the we'll put it in yeah. the description in the, yeah. in, the, in the pinned comment as well yeah yeah and is there anywhere else be, is there anywhere else you could send people if they want to learn more about this if they want to get gather social media content they can share other other pages or websites that you recommend people to go to um, there are so many platforms, but I'm hesitant to do that just because sometimes even like the biggest news channels, I see news that is false news. Um, okay. so I, I don't want to be sending people to their places where I don't even know. Cause when I see the news, I only share the ones that, and I could share something and then it turns out to be not true, but yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. Cause, um, you know, even like BBC recently posted something that turned out to, to be, they shared a photo that was from two years ago or a year ago. Right. Um, I mean, that's BBC. So like, if they're not credible, I don't want to send people to someone else's page when they're not going to do their homework okay. to make sure, you know, um, what they're posting sure. is true. But there are so many people, I mean, they can, they can, you, you know, go on Twitter and the hashtag is trending and, um, yeah. What is the hashtag? Sorry. Um, the the hashtag is the name of the girl that was killed. So the hashtag is Massa okay. Amini. Yeah, which okay. I think has oh, I got seen that okay. views. Uh, so, sorry, 100 million, um, not views. Um, like tags, yeah, basically. Yeah, on Twitter, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that hashtag. I didn't know it was her name, actually. I, I thought, I didn't know what it was, but I'd, I've seen it a few times in my comments from people um yeah like one person actually that's the quite... main hashtag so it's it's her name but it's become the the hashtag for the movement or for yeah great so so that that will i'll i'll put that in the um in the uh, description as well so people can use that hashtag to to keep up to date if they want to follow um the movements and follow what's going on and and also post their own with that hashtag i'll put it there because maybe it might be a tricky one to spell if people don't know um, yeah how to spell it yeah exactly um 
So I, I look, thank you for coming on here and doing this. I know it can't have been easy going through all of this because it's 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 very you know it, it's quite emotionally intensive to to discuss this. Um, I'm very aware of that, um, but I really do appreciate you coming and getting into it. I think the uh, I think there are a lot of people who watch this who didn't know about these things and now do, and that's the point, isn't it? Right? Like I didn't know half of the things you were saying as well. This, this is the yeah. point. This is why. I think it's important to have these kinds of discussions um and i think it's great what you're doing on instagram uh, posting about this as well uh as well as all the amazing work you do for animals with anonymous for the voiceless it's i think it's i always say that if somebody is able to do everything and you're you're awesome <laughs> you know this is something that's like it's very hard to even do just focus on animal rights it's extremely difficult so if you're able to somehow have the time and energy to do animal rights and human rights and 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 go forward at the same thing that that's that's some serious um you know strength you've got there so i big respect and um you know i think what you're doing is amazing um is there anything that that we didn't get into that you wanted to mention before we finish up um no no thank you for everything you just said and yeah i appreciate you wanting to do a podcast to bring more light to this and using your platform for this um but yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I can imagine how shocked you can be from some of the things I mentioned. And I only mentioned like a few things, like there is a whole list of um, things that I could bring up. So mm -hmm. I think if people are interested in learning more about it, yeah, like there, there are so much more about um, so many more um, things about why people are protesting right now. So it's not just about the headscarf or a little bit of hair. It's not about that person that was killed. It's literally so much more um, that people can find out about. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think that was good. And you're right. It's quite emotional. And it's hard for me to um, to even talk about it sometimes. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful that we did this. Cool. Well, I, I again, again, really appreciate you coming on, and I hope as you said, there's a lot to find out. So people, um, you know, keep researching. And if you, if there's anything that you want to add, um, especially I suppose some Iranian people will see this as well. So if there's something you want to add to this, please get in the comments and add more information, um, add, uh, places where people can go. Um, you can't post links in the comments, but you can post, you know, people can Google, right? So just post what you want people to Google and they can go and Google it and I'll, um, make sure to heart those comments so people can spot the ones that are worth looking at. And let's, you know, let's try and make a little bit of impact, the little impact that we can on this little podcast channel, but it's better than nothing, right? So we'll do our best. And thank you again, Asal. Thank you.